Hey, what's up guys? It's Ivan here at ivanmena.com. And in this video, I wanna show you how to set up conversion tracking for Google Ads as we're approaching 2023. Conversion tracking is incredibly important. I can't stress it enough. Just like you cannot hit a target that you can't see, you also cannot optimize a campaign that you can't track. So conversion tracking, incredibly, incredibly important. So this is going to be our Google Ads account we'll be using here. And Unbounce is going to be the landing page builder of our choice. So I have here two pages. I have the landing page and the thank you page. And I'm going to show you how to set up conversion tracking on the thank you page so that you can see when somebody signs up. And then what you can do is you can apply the same logic that I show you here to set up conversion tracking for sales, upsells, anything you want, okay? So before we get into it, guys, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell icon so you get notified when I release more content just like this, showing you various tools to help you make money online, all right? so. The first thing we're going to do here in our Google Ads account is click on Tools and Settings, and we're going to click on Conversions right over here. And this is the page that you might see. It's going to say Set Up Conversion Tracking. So you're simply going to click on New. So we're going to click on Website here. I'm assuming you guys have some sort of website that you want to track. And then here what you're going to do is Google is trying to make it easier for you. They're going to scan the website for you over here. So that's going to be the first thing. So we're gonna go into, let's say our thank you page because we wanna track how many people sign up, okay? So we're gonna be wanting to put conversion tracking on this page. So I'm going to copy this URL, I'm going to copy link address, come back here, and I'm going to paste it here, and I'm going to scan. And then Google is going to scan and see if it's, if it's available to be set up for conversions. And it looks like it is. So we have two options here. One is we can set up the code so we can add specific code to this page, event code, or we can simply create conversions via website events. So all we're gonna have to do here is set up our website URL, and then Google is going to provide us a tracking code that we have to enter on the page, and that is it. So this is, I would say, the easier way to do it. So this is what we're gonna do. If you do prefer to add a second piece of code in addition to the one they'll give you on the next page, you can do this option here. So you'll say add a conversion action manually, they'll give you a code and you're gonna add it on this page. This is not necessary, this is more than enough for this to work and it is generally the easier way. So that's what we're gonna do. So the first thing here is select conversion goal. We're going to select what we want to measure. So the first thing we're gonna measure here is leads. So we can say submit lead form. You could also say sign up, whatever it is you're doing, whatever is relevant for you. This is going to be only for your reference. So Google isn't going to check this and say, oh, you set the wrong action conversion goal. Sorry, we're not gonna track conversions, right? All of this is all for your reference or at least just this part over here. So um, it's gonna be submit lead form because we have the thank you page, right? And then we have the landing page. So let me quickly show you actually what it looks like. So if we come back here, we go to the landing page and just to show you. So the landing page is gonna look like this. People are gonna land on this page, they're gonna enter their email and then they're gonna land on this thank you page, right? And so we want to be able to add a code to this page to track how many people sign up. So this is the thank you page. So what we have to do is I'm going to select over here back in Google URL contains and we're going to enter this thank you page URL. So I'm going to copy it I'm going to come back here and I'm going to paste it. So whatever URL you want to track. So in this case, we're tracking how many people sign up on our landing page. So the only way they do that, the only way they can sign up successfully is if they land on the thank you page. That's how we know that they successfully signed up. And so that's the URL you wanna put in here. So if you're tracking sales, then you wanna put the sales confirmation page, like the thank you confirmation page that people land on after they submit payment. That's the page that you would be entering here for whatever objective you are doing. And then in that case for you, if it's a sale, it would be purchase, okay, makes sense? Now the other thing we wanna do is because we're saying URL contains, we don't need to add this HTTP stuff in there, so we can simply delete it. And then as long as the URL contains these letters here in this order, AKA this URL, the conversion will show up, okay? So we can click on add, and now it's going to be considered a submit lead if somebody lands on this URL. And how does somebody land on this URL? By successfully signing up 
on this page. Does, does that make sense? So now that we've done that, we can go down. We don't need to do this. So if you, you know, it's one or the other, either this one or this one. So because we've done this option, we do not have to do this. So we're gonna click save and continue. And now Google is going to provide us a code. Okay, so they're gonna give us a Google tag. So you can email instructions, you can enter the email address. So whoever is responsible for this, the point of this video is to try to make it easy for you. So hopefully you should be able to do it on your own here. So you're gonna click on set up for the Google tag. So you can also click on choose tag if you have other accounts that uh, you can use an existing tag for, but I'm assuming this is your only account, you're starting from scratch. So you're going to click on install a Google tag and then you're gonna click on next. And then Google is going to provide you the code. So the first option here is you can actually select a platform you're using. So let's say you're using uh, Wix or Duda. I'm not familiar with any of these, to be honest. But if you do, then you can just click on any of them and then it, they're going to tell you what to do. So they'll tell you where to go, where to log in, how to install it, okay? So pretty simple. I'm going to go the manual route in case you don't have one of these. So I'm gonna show you how to just do it normally, basically the normal way, assuming there is no integration with the specific website builder. So you're gonna click on install manually. You're going to copy this whole code and then Google is telling you, this is the code, copy it in, on every page of your website immediately after the head element. Don't add more than one tag. So this is the Google tag. So this is the general tag, not only for uh, conversions. This will also be the tag for remarketing, all right? But remarketing, I'm gonna cover in a separate video. So what you wanna do here is take this code. We've copied it. We wanna come back to our thank you page here. We're going to click on edit. And we're going to click on JavaScript, go to add new JavaScript. And we're going to paste the code over here. We can name it. We can say Google ads conversion tracking for your reference. And we can put it in the head tag. And this way, this code will fire as soon as the page loads. Now, obviously not everybody has unbounce, even though this is my landing page builder of my choice, I strongly suggest unbounce for building landing pages. But if you're using anything else, what you wanna do is find a page JavaScript option where you can go in and you can add code to the whole page. So in Unbounce, it's in the bottom left. In ClickFunnels, it's the top left. In Lead Pages, I think it's also in the top left. So basically you wanna to go to an option where you can add code. If you're using WordPress, you can install a plugin. I think it's called Headers and Footers. And then in that plugin, you would simply take this code and put it in the head section of all your pages. So in this case, we are only tracking the thank you page, so we don't have to put it on the landing page. But if you want to set up remarketing later on, you could add the same code that we've added right here to your landing page as well. So you're going to click on save, you're going to click on republish. So as a recap for what we did here, in case you wanna track other things like a sale, anything like that, you want to add this code that Google provides you on every page you wanna track. If you wanna track a sale, you wanna add this code on the sale confirmation page. If you wanna track an upsell, you wanna add this code on the upsell confirmation page, so on and so forth. Does, does that make sense? So basically every page you wanna track, you wanna add this code to, okay? So we've added the code successfully, so that should be good. We're going to come back here, we're going to click on done, and now it's checking to see if we have successfully installed the tag on our thank you page. And Google says it has been successfully installed. It says installed on the site. So that's good. That's what you wanna see. You wanna see this, uh, this uh, green check mark saying that you've installed it successfully. Next, we're going to click on done. And this is our conversion. So it has been successfully created. And if you click on it here, you can edit all the settings here. So if you click on edit settings, you'll be able to come in and make any changes. So Google has made it very simple for us. It's kind of given us options to fill in the blank and everything has been done here. But if you want, you can go in here and change things up. So if you wanna change the conversion name, so the conversion name, you know, this is the default, which has the website in case you have many different submit lead forms, we can leave that. You have the goal. So this was the specific action that we selected. You have the URL that, you know, what does this conversion actually mean? You have the value. So if you are especially making purchases, how much is each purchase worth for you? 
Or if you work backwards and you figure out how many leads does it take for me to make a purchase, you can then divide that purchase by the number of leads it takes and you'll be able to get the value for how much each lead is worth. So let's suppose it is $1 or you can say, well, hey, it's just a lead. I have no idea. I'm just starting out. I don't know how much each lead is worth for me. You can say that. So we can hit save here. For the source, it's, it is going to be website because we're setting up website conversion tracking. For account, let's suppose one user has signed up to your page multiple times throughout the day. Do you want to count every single conversion from that user or do you only want that to count as one conversion from that user? So this is up to you. I like to go with one just to make sure that it's unique and to make sure that uh, the same user doesn't repeatedly sign up or repeat the same action multiple times. So for this specific conversion type for leads, I'm going to say one. Then you have the click through conversion window. So after how many days, this is what you're going to set the limit. After how many days after clicking on your ad, do you want the conversion to show up? So if you set this to 90, if somebody clicks on your ad and then makes a purchase, or in this case, signs up to my lead form 92 days later, that will not be counted as a conversion. If I change this to, for example, 30 days, then if somebody sees my ad, they click on it, and then 15 days later they sign up, then it will be considered a conversion. So this is totally up to you. The higher the value you set, the higher the chance that the conversion is irrelevant to your actual ad, right? However, you also don't wanna set it as too strict, like let's say one week, because sometimes people do need the time to make a decision, especially for things like buying a house, buying a car. It's usually a decision that takes a long time. You know, it could take months, it could take years for someone. So in that case, you'll want the click through conversion window to be longer because then your ad will probably still have played an effect in the people signing up or performing that specific conversion you're looking for. So 90 days is okay, we're gonna leave it here. Next, you have the engaged view conversion window. So this is for videos. So it's the same thing as the click through conversion. So if somebody has seen at least 10 seconds of your video, how many days do you want to give them and them signing up before that will be or will not be considered a conversion? So if you say three days and somebody watches your 10 second video and they sign up four days later, that will not be a conversion. So we're going to leave that at three days. This is assuming you have a video. So not all of you guys will have video ads. So in that case, that will not apply. Then you have the view through conversion window. So same thing as click through, except instead of clicking on your ad, somebody just seeing your ad. So if somebody sees your ad and then five days later, they actually make the purchase. In this case, if it says one day, that will not be considered as a conversion, okay? So the view through is the least engaged of all of these because people haven't clicked, they haven't seen the video, they simply viewed your ad. So that's what that is. And then next here you have data-driven. So data-driven is the best attribution model. So let me briefly go through these because there's a lot of detail to be said. So the last click attribution model is basically, let's say you have many different campaigns, you have many different ads. If you select last click, then only your very last ad that was clicked on will get the conversion, nothing else. If you select first click, only the very first ad that somebody clicked on will get a conversion. If you select linear, then every single ad that was involved in the process for somebody to make a conversion will get a conversion attributed to them evenly. So if there's one conversion and you have five ads, then you will see that every single ad will have 0.2 of a conversion, right? Because one divided by five is 0.2. Then you have time decay, where as you can see here in the picture, the ad that happened last, we'll get the higher percentage of a conversion attributed to it. So again, let's say you have five ads. In this case, the last ad will maybe get 60% or so of the conversion. So the last ad will get 0.6 of, uh, of a conversion. The second ad will get maybe 0.3. The next ad will get 0.05, you know, so on and so forth. And then you have position based where the first and the last ad will get the biggest percentage, the biggest distribution of a conversion, and the ones in between will not. So the data driven is the best because in this case, Google ads is using its algorithms to actually determine which ad actually played a bigger effect in the conversion. So this is the ideal method. Originally, if you recall, uh, just last year, for example, this option was not available until you got like 90 conversions or so in your account. So it's great now that this is available to everybody right now.
So we're gonna click on done. And then this is basically it. So this is the tag setup. If you want to install the tag again, you have it right here. And then enhanced conversions. What this does is if Google has some information about the customer, such as their email, their name, phone number, whatever information you're also collecting, Google will be able to match that information with what they have, with what you have, with what the person provided to uh, improve the accuracy of the conversions. So I'm gonna click on cancel. I'm just gonna leave this as the default and we're gonna go back. And that's basically it. So that's how you edit. And then if you go into your campaigns, let's see if I have a campaign to show you. Well, actually over here. So if you go into columns and you go into modify columns, you go into conversions, you can show up your conversions over here. So you can say apply. And now your conversions are going to show up over here. And then what you can do is you can segment. So you can say segment, conversions, conversion action. And that way you will see all the different conversions by the specific type. So if you have many different conversions set up, let's say you have a lead conversion, a purchase conversion, an upsell, downsell conversion, you will see all of them show up over here right underneath your campaign. And that's how it's gonna be segmented, right under the conversion column. And that is pretty much it. So again, tools and settings, conversions, if you wanna make any edits, you can do so over here. And congratulations, you have successfully set up your conversion. That's all you're gonna do is one, enter the URL, and then two, you're going to just add the code. And if you wanna set up a new conversion action, let's suppose to track a sale or anything like that, you just click on that and just follow the same exact process, all right? So that is it. I hope you guys found value in this video. If you enjoyed this content, I definitely suggest that you check out my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Ivan where I have almost 500 plus free videos at this point of various online marketing tools, tips, tricks, techniques, and so on to help you succeed with online and or affiliate marketing. So that is all. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.